My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to episode number 6 of the Transport Fever 2 series on the small map. Previously in episode 5 we expanded the fuel production line to now, well, produce fuel first of all, and to then ship it on into Long Eaton. Now, the changes didn't seem to go down too well in terms of how much money they were actually making us and uh, we turned quite a profitable line into a loss making enterprise so what I have done is I have let the game run off camera uh, with the date paused for quite a while and it did take several hours to accumulate enough money that we could make some changes now I've made those changes off camera and I have tested them and they do seem to be doing quite nicely for us the first change I made was the routing of the tracks. Rather than skirt all around the outside of that large hill stroke mountain that we have by the fuel refinery, we now cut through. It's a much more direct route and that seems to have helped. What I've also done is I've set up a second line and this line uh, features the trains that we can see here well one of them that is just coming into the Hearn Bay oil refinery and this just brings in the crude oil to be refined into refined oil and then we have a separate line that takes the refined oil converts it into the fuel and then delivers the fuel on into Long Eaton that seems to have made a big difference you may notice as well we're not using the PLM I want to say I might be wrong uh, trains that we were using initially, uh, the trains doing the crude oil shunt, they are now using a more powerful and more superior locomotive and they seem to be doing pretty well for us. I let the game run once the changes had been made just to uh, see how it would perform and it performs admirably, so much so that I've managed to repay the 20 million loan that we had initially. And here we can see the, the other line just coming into view here as the train comes alongside to pick up some of that refined oil. Now the handy thing is about uh, doing it this way is we don't have to worry about that 2 to 1 step down if we're using the same train the whole way. This train can wait for a full load because this refinery here pretty much has a full supply of crude oil waiting to be converted at any one time. So these trains can leave with a full load. That means they can wait about at the fuel refinery to also get a full load and they can deliver a full load of the fuel into Long Eaton for onward shipment into the city itself. So here's the state of affairs. We're making f just under 3 million now per year, which is nice, and a bank balance of $14 million. We're in 1915 and we are still going at half times date speed. And what we're going to do now is just have a quick walk through the changes that were made. So as I said, these trains here running down here, they're only coming from here to here and then back. So they're just shipping crude oil, dropping it off and then heading back for another load. As we can see, we have three trains running down here, which seems to be a decent amount. Uh, I'm not going to add another one just yet. The, th the three seem to be doing pretty well and they're making us decent profits. And they're not having to hang around up here to be fully loaded. Now here's the line down to the fuel refinery. Now if you remember, initially we had it coming all the way around here and in this side. As I said, I've changed that around so it now comes much more direct. And then the, the line branches off and splits here. So we come down here through the tunnel into the fuel refinery. We can see one train in the station just there before heading out. And this line hasn't changed, so this route is all the same. We go through this mountain into Long Eaton and then we head back we take this line rejoin the double track and head up to the refinery so that seems to be working quite well for us as we can see here the crew chunt is actually making us about 3 3.2 million the Long Eaton fuels it's not making us that much at the moment but it is doing a decent enough job for us and everything else is as it was. There's been no changes around here. I think I might have added an extra bus to the Long Eaton Industrial and the Commercial lines. This one still has the one. It's not as a popular of a service as the other two, so we can just retain the single bus running that line. So now that we're all caught up and the changes have been discussed, let's have a look at what we want to do next. 
Well, my first thought was that we'll have some sort of train line running down here and we'll replace these road vehicles with a train service. And we may even bring in the planks into here as well. I mean, there is a connection between the rail line and the tool factory, so we could drop them off for consumption over here. And my initial feelings are we'd have a junction somewhere in this area train line would come through here through this little pass here we'd have a station in this area which is where we service the sawmill and then we'd have a line that runs all the way up to the forest up here uh, in terms of how we'd organize the line well we also we have another two to one situation here where if we use the same train we wouldn't be getting a full load in terms of the uh, wagon capacity when we get to the freight exchange because we we can't we can't do that you know if we're carrying 60 then the maximum that the train could pick up would be 30. so that's something to consider so what we might end up doing is like we did up on our fuel line we'll just have one train well one line that brings down the the logs into the sawmill and then a second line which takes the planks into the freight exchange so if we we're going to do that then, let's make a start straight away. So we're going to need a cargo station by the sawmill and we want to be careful of the placement here because we need to make sure we can get the train line through this little valley here and still have enough room to connect into our station. I think at this point it's probably worth going for an expanded size in terms of the station length so we'll go for the 320 meters and I'm thinking we'll put this station somewhere like that and we'll just quickly rename it while we have the UI for the station open and we want to make sure we do have an active and working connection which I think we should do from this distance but we shall make sure by adding the road connection and yes we do so that's all fine so we don't need another station down here we can just utilize this one that does mean we need to include a diamond on the escape from this station which we can quickly put in we already have one switch over all we need to do is put in the counterpart and there is our diamond okay so the next thing we need to do is look at how we want to connect this into here now I think what we'll do is we shall temporarily remove these signals just here and in this area is where we'll branch off to head towards this station over here. So let's have a look how we want to achieve that. Now we want it as fast as we possibly can. Uh, 60 miles per hour isn't too bad at all. It's faster than our trains, or well, well, it's faster than our wagons can manage at this point, so we can live with that. So that will be our branch here. And then these lines can immediately veer off, heading towards this little cutting between the two mountain ranges just here. And again, trying to make sure we have as much speed on this corner as we possibly can. What I'm going to do before we go any further is just bring up the contour overlay so we can see what sort of height we're at so over here it's around about 100 meters and over here it's pretty much exactly the same so if we keep our line straight in terms of elevation then we should be pretty much perfectly placed to connect into that station so what we want to do to achieve that is click that. That's going to keep us around about 104 metres. We have gone up a little bit, only by 2 metres though, so that's not too concerning. We don't have to scrub off too much speed there. And we'll double track it, of course, because we're going to have a couple of trains running down here, I would imagine. And how does that look? It's a bit slow there. It's also a bit slow there, but that's irrelevant because we're coming in and out of a station anyway. But I think that's perfectly acceptable for what we need it to do right now. In the future, we might want to improve that for a little bit more efficiency, but I think we're going to be okay for the time being. So we're also going to want to have a diamond over here. 
In fact, what we can do, we can just have a single switch over because we can make sure that our trains use platform one for loading the planks. And then we don't need a diamond at this point. So that will work. We need to do some signals for the junction that we've just created here where these two lines merge into one so we can handle that now and let's just put one there controlling traffic in and out of the junction and if we put another set of blocking signals just here on either side of the on both tracks that will free up the junction for any trains waiting to come on through and if we have another set ah i'm glad i spotted that though that line is not connected and it's going to be it's going to be awkward is it to connect that let's see it shouldn't be unless i'm not quite clicking the correct node hmm. well we can always just delete it and uh, go again that's not a problem right there we go now we are connected some weird terrain artifacts there but that's fine so we'll have a block just there either side of the level crossing and then we want one for controlling traffic in and out of the station and ideally we also want one just prior to the entrance of the tunnel to clear up this block for any train that may be waiting to depart let's also throw in one more signal there that does leave that one very very short but in fact no let's get rid of that one that's not going to do anything we'll get rid of that but i think we will have a clearing signal in fact no because if we put a clearing signal anywhere in here there's a real possibility that the trains the wagons will be blocking this diamond so anything waiting to come in will be stranded at least temporarily so We'll keep that as it is. It does mean our trains might have to wait a bit further back or they can't get a runoff off the platform straight away, but that's okay. Okay, so moving swiftly onwards, we now want to take this line to the forest. Now, the train here, it's bumpy, but it's relatively flat, so any gradient changes should not be a concern over here. And let's go ahead and chuck down a station down here. And I dare say we'll get away with a terminus station at this point because there's nothing else coming out of, you know, there's nowhere else for the train lines to go in terms of this direction. Although we could have them sweep around. So yeah, we will go for a pass through station just in case we want to do something in the future. We don't want to hem ourselves in unnecessarily. As we can see, the train does drop off to the right over here. What if we had it like that? Would that be okay? This, no, I don't like that because the train line would be very, very snaky. So let's just put it a little further away so we can almost perfectly line it up with the station we are heading to. And if we put it somewhere like that, Yes, we've got the raised embankment on the one side, but we can always sort that out with some terraforming later on. And hopefully we are close enough to generate a connection to the industry, which I think we should be. Let's have a look. Yes, we are. So let's just call this Long Eaton Forestry. And then this should be a straightforward connection between these two stations. And in fact, we can probably do it in one go. No, we can't because of the road. Right, let's see. So if we head to there, we're going up quite a few meters there, but I think we do need to climb up to get level with the station, so we'll have to accept that. Okay, so it's this junction here what's causing us a few problems. Well, this is a road to nowhere anyway, so we can just delete the whole thing. And now we should be able to take our line across and into the station fairly easily. Let's have a look. Hmm, yeah, that's that's not very pleasant there, is it? Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to temporarily pause this. It's going to annoy the line, but we can always replace the road in a few moments. That's not the right tool. That's the one. Just to have a nice or a smoother rail line, rather than having that unnecessary 
dip and rise that we had there. So let's do something like that. Now we want these to be on platform two. So we want our switch over to be something like this. There we go, and then that should be A-OK. -okay. Let's just quickly rebuild this road, even though the, the vehicles running on it may find themselves out of service very, very soon. And we'll do that with a nice, easy bridge over the rail line, like that. And then let's just return that to ground level, sweep you down. How does that look? It's rather pleasant. And if we just take that back a bit, because the angle there wasn't quite what we needed, that looks okay. So that's kept our line happy, even though, as I just said, it's likely to find itself mothballed very, very soon. Now let's go ahead and chuck some signals in along this line. So we'll have one there. We'll have one there for departure from the station. And then if we get away with maybe one blocking or two blocks along this run here, it's not a long run. One, I think, yeah, we might squeeze in one more. Like that. And then we want something like this. Because again, we want our trains to be on platform one when they're picking up the logs. So it's a bit slow, but that's okay. I mean, really, we could have done this with just a single platform station, but I forgot to change it, so we'll have two. But platform two is likely not to be used at any point, although if we do have stuff passing through in the future, at least we have a platform or a track ready to use as a pass-through track. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we want to set up the line. And to begin with, we're just going to go like that. Just taking the logs into the sawmill because I don't think we're going to have enough money to do both. We do have the improved or the increased costs for vehicles, if you remember. So we have to be, uh, we have to bear that in mind. Ordinarily, you'd think, yeah, we can get a couple of trains with that. However, in our case, we cannot. So we want to wait for a full load, and you're loading the logs over here. You won't be picking anything up, but of course, you will be dropping off the logs. And this will be RC because it's rail cargo. And this will be the long eaten uh, logs freight. Okay. So let's get this line. No, I don't need to do that. I've just created the line. Let's go over here and get ourselves a train. So buy vehicles. Now, what do we want to use? I think, well, let's go for the A35, although it is quite a lot, quite an increase in terms of the yearly maintenance. Hmm. No, let's do it. Let's go for the A35. And in terms of your consist, then, what do you want? You want these, don't you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's still a good rating. We can afford this train, 10 million. 9, 10, still a good rating, and we can still afford it. Can we go to 14? Just about. If we buy it now, and it's still got a good rating. Now, we can only afford one of these, of course, so we're going to have to stick to just one at the moment. What does it look like if we colour it in? Yeah, we'll colour it. Okay. So, if we assign you onto this line, unable to find path to stop. Ah, oh, I see what it is. Because, I mean, you could turn around in the station, but they can't quite figure out how to do that. So what we are going to need is a way to get our train from this line here over onto the other line. Now, hopefully we can afford this because we've uh, got very little money. So we want you to do something like that. The speed is irrelevant. It is just for access purposes so they can get themselves onto the designated line like that. Can we afford a signal on here? Yes, we can. So we'll put just the one signal there. We don't need anything controlling this at all. It's only for access purposes. It's not a commonly used little connection. So we can leave that as it is in terms of its signals. We still can't find a way there. Okay. 
I know what it is because this comes into here. There's no way for it to come this way. Okay then, so what we're going to have to do once again is another connection. This time like so. How does it look? Yeah, it's not too bad. And again, this is just for access purposes only, so we can get away with one signal. And now, my friend, you should be happy enough and be able to get to your designated route. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So what we're going to have to do now is amend this road delivery line because we want this train to be the sole point of collection of the logs. So if we go into here and here and then we go manage the line, what we need to do is get rid of that. You can now actually wait for a full load because we can make sure we've got a decent supply of logs coming in. And we want to make sure you're not unloading anything there anymore. You're just loading planks. And over here, you're just unloading the planks. And then you're heading back. Why? Oh, I guess it's not updated yet. Not sure why it's still showing it coming all the way down here when I've just changed that. But there we go. Let's see. Now you should stop heading this way. Yeah, there we go. It's disappeared. Oh, it's come back again. Is it this waypoint? Ah, yes, that's why. They're coming all the way around to hit this waypoint. Get rid of that. That was a bit unnecessary, but what we do want to do is make sure they come in around this way, just to keep it nice and tidy. So we're going to need a waypoint on this corner here, like that. And then go back to the line manager. After the tool forge, come that way. There we go. And that should be A-OK. -okay. The first few vehicles are going to be waiting for a long time to get a full load because we have no supply well of one which they can't do anything with and our train has got to make its way all the way down here to start bringing in the logs. Okay, so what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to have a little cut in the video. We'll wait for, so just while this train makes its way down and then we'll have a look at how this is going to perform for us. Hopefully all the logs have moved over. Yes, they have. This is now redundant, so if we wanted to, we could actually delete this. That's going to save us a little bit in terms of maintenance and upkeep, so we'll do that. And in fact, we can get rid of this depot as well. We don't need that anymore. So again, a little extra saving there on the old maintenance and upkeep. So this bridge is redundant. However, it does look quite nice, so we will keep it in play. It adds a little bit to the scenery for any future cab rides. We get to go underneath the bridge. So yes, like I said, at this point we'll put a little cut in this episode. We'll wait for our train to get down here and then we'll see how she is going to perform. So we'll pick it back up in just a few moments time. Okay then ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Our train has made it over here. It has done a couple of deliveries. I think it's in about three or four deliveries now. In the meantime, I have got rid of a few of these trucks that were on this line. We had far too many than you know for what we needed them to do now. Given that they're not heading all the way down here, we don't need quite as many. So I have reduced the vehicle count that runs on this line. In terms of our new train, let's have a look how it's going to perform for us. Well, we can see here, this is roughly the sort of expenses we can be expecting to pay per year for this locomotive and over here we can see the sort of profits we're expecting to make so it's going to be a profitable line I mean this expenditure bar may be a little bit higher this year simply because this may not have been you know running for a full calendar year so this may only be a partial year's expenses however I do think we're going to have enough in enough play enough What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. But yeah, we're going to have enough scope here that even if this does climb a little bit higher, we're still going to have a profitable line. At some point, of course, we are going to want to have two trains doing this delivery route. At the minute, we only have one. We can't afford the second one, although we are still making decent money, as we can see. These trucks are doing a pretty good job here. I think we've got a decent balance in terms of the production output here and how many vehicles we have servicing as you can see we do have a couple waiting around 
but eventually, as I said, if we're going to have second train on this line, then we're going to have a more steady th flow through down here, and we should never run out of raw materials. So there may be, you know, not quite as much backlog down here. Although I do, I'm going to, I dare say, we can get rid of one more of them, at least one anyway. So yes, everything's looking good so far. A new profitable line has been set up. Let's just see. Yep, it's going to be, that's so yes, we did climb a little bit higher on the running cost as we can see, 1.81 million, whereas a full year is actually 1.87 million. So the uh, the income is going to dwarf the expenses, so that to me is a very, very good sign. And we will go ahead and add a second train to this route in the near future. And then of course we want to look at having a train that runs from the sawmill to the freight exchange to deliver the planks and then we can get rid of these these vehicles here entirely and that should uh, boost our profits nicely as well so we'll leave it there for today but before we do depart let's just have a quick look at long eaton it's really the only city that's had any attention so far we do have vehicles near epping of course but they're not doing anything to epping so let's have a look how we're doing so very poor on emissions which is to be expected we did crank up the the uh, the, the impact of emissions in our startup so that's okay the tools have dropped off a little bit but that's probably just while this new line gets itself bedded in the fuel is looking very very healthy however almost at 100 uh, fuel per year being delivered and we do have plenty on the platform so much so that i've actually increased the amount of vehicles on this line as we can see i've added two more quite recently and i've added a cargo building just to try and make sure we don't waste any of the incoming fuel likewise over here i I can foresee that we will need this building in the future so I've added one in now while while I was thinking about it so that's there ready so when we start really spamming the wood into the sawmill and this kicks into overdrive production we shouldn't start overfilling this platform and wasting some resources but yes that's where we'll end it for today uh, lines looking very very good indeed some nice profitable lines this one less so at the moment, but I do think overall it is profitable. It's, it's marginal, as we can see. We had a we did have a period here off camera. This is between the two episodes where they got caught up waiting for each other here, which is why we had no income for several years. That's been changed as we can see. So yes, while the profits are razor thin, um, it is doing a job for us. So I'm not too concerned about that. Everything else is looking pretty good. Yeah, the buses aren't making as much money, if any money at all, but I'm never really concerned about your bus lines. They're, they don't lose ground, you know, game-breaking amounts of money if they're making a loss, so it's all good. This line, very, very healthy. 3.2 million, uh, looking very good indeed. So what we'll do then, we'll jump on this new train. We'll have a ride, uh, but it's only a short ride, so we'll go to the station and back, I think, just so... It doesn't only, you know, so we're not saying goodbye in the next three seconds. We have a little bit of a longer cab ride. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and uh, you're enjoying the series. If you are, then obviously please consider hitting that like button down below. It does mean a lot and it really does help out. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel and you would like to do so, then again, that's also greatly appreciated and it helps out as well. The next video that will be launched will be a Railway Empire video as we tackle Chapter 2. It's already been uploaded, but I've scheduled it to be released after this one. So I'm going to try and alternate-ish between the two games, Transport Fever 2 and Railway Empire. There's a couple other games I'm looking at as well. Railroads Online, uh, maybe even the classic Sid Meier's Railroads. And there's a couple of us as well, but they're all going to be, you know, based around trains and tycoon style games, because that's what we do here. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, all that means for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.